today, today guys. Um, my change, I was doing some research on some companies, including BRFS up here, and I was seeing where I was and seeing what, you know, looking at some more stuff about this in particular company to see if I wanted to wait um, to try to sell this or just jump out, you know, since we have until the 24th, which today being the 17th, got 18th, 19th, 20, so like five days to jump into Zim to get that dividend since that's been my main focus this week. And uh, go in there, you know, instead of the $1,900 loss in some change, it's only at $1,400 loss. And from what I've been looking at, I was looking to make, if I sold out at the 6160 6170 somewhere in that number range because the numbers changed because it was live when I was um, running these numbers. By selling out of those and buying into Zim, which I think I did around 2380 2385 or so, I would get X amount of shares, which I forgot. And then you multiply that X amount of shares number times the $4.80 dividend prior to U.S. taxes. This is after the 25% tax for Israeli tax. You're still getting $1,220 pre-U.S. tax, post-Israeli tax. So I'm looking at taking a $200 gain or $200 loss to get out of BRFS and get that money rolling into Zim which is a company that, like I said, I've looked into and I feel that that is a really, really big, good opportunity. And those were the numbers I was running, thinking about today, right? So like literally 20 minutes before market closed, I was looking at other companies as well. Um, I was looking into PBR down here, like some of their financials and whatnot. Um, I'm still, you know on the fence about that one i mean it has a huge huge market cap you know there's a security there it's brazilian based so instead of 25 percent tax it's at 15 percent tax i can see the attraction and why that would get a lot more attention and um it also pays very nice dividends so the, the thing that i was kind of interested in here with is that the dividend that it's going to be paying is in may so it would be nice to get good dividends every month, right? So this April, because I did make a change in the portfolio, which I'll show you, I'm looking at getting a very nice dividend even after the taxes. And I've also been looking into what the tax credits could be because, again, got, you know, some responses, you know, in a, let me pull it up real quick. I want to give credit to y'all, you know, when some when y'all uh, tell me about something and they're like, hey, look at this, you know, then I definitely look into it, you know. I'm like, yes, I definitely want to look into this. So, see real quick. I believe it was Dufresne's Guide Service. I want to make sure. Yes, so Dufresne's Guide Servers, thank you for leaving a comment on my video. You said you can get this 25% tax break on your taxes with the proper forms. So I was saying like, yes, I have a, an aunt to it. I don't really you know, know her that well. But they seem to do very well. And I can reach out to them to see if I can get these tax you know, breaks and whatnot, because that's great. That's more you're getting of not having to pay that. I've been trying to do some research into that myself. Um, I'm still not quite there yet. I know you got, you know, a uh, American citizen living in Israel, you know, and, and different stuff like that. I've been looking at it. There's a lot going on. I'm not quite understanding it as good. So I don't want to, you know, try to talk about something that I'm still having to figure out. But um, I was looking at other companies to see if there's other things I want to get into. I do like that PBR does pay a dividend in May because I'd like to get nice big dividends every month, right? Um, but looking at some of PBR, you know, the, the balance sheets and stuff, I've just noticed there's a... It's not... The balance sheet is not as attractive as Zim, right? Um, but it's still 
you know, probably a very safe company. It's huge market cap. Uh, let me see real quick. Like the market cap on that, like is insane. I know I've, I've showed it before, you know, 62 billion almost. The PE ratio is still very low. You know, it's nice dividend yield still. Even if they cut it, you know, this pay you this year getting hit 15% taxes before, you know, your uh, US tax bracket. But this is something that um, I also like. I still think Zim's more attractive, even though it's in the same thing. They're both shipping companies, but they pay different months. So you're looking to get an income different months. So really, that's that's my attraction there getting income in april and then instead of having to wait three more months you get an income in may but i have not done anything with that position yet i was just looking at it and further looking into things um going forward i just jump into this so yes yeah, so that's what i'm looking at with the pre-tax uh going into selling out of what yeah i was trying to get my calculator what did i do here selling out of brfs which i did Kind of getting all over the place. So I'll just go to the next video or the next thing real quick. So that way I don't get too off of where I'm going here. So this is what I did today. You notice BRFS is gone. Taking a $200 loss. I'm looking at acquiring this prior to the U.S. taxes. And I increased my position to 1,085 shares. Current value $25,800. My cost twenty three thousand six hundred and uh total gains still two thousand two seventeen which i like and today's zim did go down which i was expecting because you can't just go green like three four days running even though it deserves that green it deserves that green but you can't expect it to just run green for a long time i mean it's gonna especially coming into the weekend you know you still got you know a lot going on in the world so a lot of people are like, we had a great week run, um, and these people aren't seeing what I'm seeing. They're not in it long term, but they took those, you know, those gains and so forth. You know, and good for them. They still, they, you know, they still got a good run on it. But I don't think Zim's done, obviously, because while other people are jumping out, taking their gains for for the week, which I, you know, I get it. That's good. I'm still at the dividend, and I'm still seeing the actual value with this thing, in my opinion, and I'm still 100% on board. They're, they're taking gains, awesome. I'm buying and I'm still gonna get probably more gains than they did during the week, unless obviously they threw like a million flat into it on Monday or Tuesday. But yeah, so I was looking at stuff like that and I was like, that's sweet. And let me kind of show you why uh, I was, I decided to take out the 14. Like, like I said, I'm looking at getting 1220 back, so I'm losing out 200. You know, and then I was in the other positions that I exited out on. I'm actually looking to gain even after that tax with the exit. I'm gaining on the ABEB and the BBD ones. Here, I'm actually taking a $200 hit. But as I looked further into uh, BRFS, you know, this here really don't mean a whole lot. You know, I used to play big on these when it came to my swing trades, and I'm still going to be doing swing trades in the future, I'm pretty sure. But right now my main focus is looking for solid companies because I just I don't know why I switched gears but I did and I'm kind of happy that I did because swing trades they're swing trades you know um, but you need to have you know that FOB those cannons those things where you're getting more loot like I've said in previous videos with a little bit of a uh, you know setting or or like cosplay thing or whatever <laughs> I don't know what you'd call it. But yeah, so I was looking at my BRFS, you know, instead of the 19, it was at 14. So that's $500 I didn't lose, right? You know, so I'm only losing a 200 versus what I would lose on 700. So I'm a lot happier with that. But as I've looked into this, I'm going to go real quick. And for instance, BRFS is, um, I wouldn't even swing trade this, honestly, in the future. Um, just because it just, I don't know, there's just a lot. I'd rather swing trade companies out a little bit better. But this is just a learning process for me, like I said, you know, a few months back, you know, so I just get better and better. I think I get better and better. But some some few things on here why I won't be doing this. I actually deleted this from my watch list for my swing trades and stuff. And like the current assets and stuff, I was looking at these numbers versus current liabilities, which are down here. I normally just point at it on my screen when I'm looking at it. Um, so you just kind of have to notice the difference on it. 
But current assets for 2019, you know, were more than, you know, their liabilities. Same for 2020, same for 2021, and it looked all right for last year. But you look at the cash, you know, and then you look at the payables accrued, you know, so you're looking at 2019, more payables had to go out, more had to go out. And like I said, I got to put my finger on it. In 2020, you know, and that's just kind of seemed like a trend of it and so forth. Um, it looks like a lot of, a lot of uh, URFS, you know, support here for current assets is in inventory. And inventory is great and all, but I've seen, and I, you like businesses and stuff like that, you know. And plus, you know, this is also Brazil, so you're paying 15% tax, right? Not to mention what you're paying here in the States. You know, most of their money is in inventory from what I'm seeing on the, cur you know, the, the, the current assets here with some stuff so it's like i don't you know inventory you, you know you could play a, you could put a, a value on it but something is only as valuable as what it sells for right so in inventory you have to move it you know you have to make money on it um so this was something like i said it was a swing trade you know so that's it was never meant to be a long-term position for me uh and zim is my way out of this and then you know you look all kinds of things like total so, like, let's see here real quick. Total non-current assets. Okay, so they're saying... They're, they're, they're putting the 31... This is in Brazilian, all numbers in the thousands. Um, so, they got 31,350 here with stuff. If you look at total non-current liabilities, you know, yeah, their assets beat that. But, you know, if you look at, you know, cash... You know, you got that number there, the 8549. And then you look at current liabilities. You know, you... Well, okay, current liabilities, you bust it down here because you say current assets. You know, but payables, you're still you're still looking at thir you know, almost 14. Based on this, I'm going to go a million, but like I said, it's in the thousands. You know, so that versus, versus cash and stuff, I was just like, oh, man. You know... And even though it's a swing trade position, just looking looking at things that I I knew to look at, but I wasn't looking at a lot, you know, with stuff in the past. I'm like, ugh. And only taking a two hundred dollar loss to get out of this instead of sitting on it for who knows how many more months that I could be putting money somewhere else, making money off something else. I was like, I need to ditch this because this is stalling my portfolio. It's not helping it. You also look at the previous dividend history of BRFS. Hasn't paid Jack in a while. Look, 2016, uh, yeah, 2015, 2014. And then not only that, but these these numbers, you know. So I was like, ugh. You know, like I said, swing trade. Not going to be swing trading anymore. It's deleted off my list. I do not recommend anybody swing trade this, you know, or do anything with it. But looking at this, it also, you know, and looking at how I was going to be getting this, this here, uh, Let's see what we got. Let's see if, what, if it after hours. Okay, but looking at, I was only sacrificing two hundred. I was like, you know what? Given how brutally bad BRFS, you know, was it wasn't even a good swing trade one to go with. Um, I know what I saw there that I thought was intriguing, which was uh, all the customer, you know, the employee count. But as as of other things, I have been learning. Um, employees, you have to pay a lot of money for them, you know, and if you're not making as much money, you're going to lose money and then they're going to borrow from banks and banks are just going to throw that money out there, kind of like Sucker Valley Bank Data or whatever it is. I just call it Sucker Valley because it was just a horrible thing. And these banks do this all the time without regulation and then they run to the Fed being like, help me, help me, help me. You know, nobody's paying me back. You know, but then they, they use all those loans that they don't get paid back as non-current assets or investments and they try to say that that's part of their you know huge money versus their debt you know so i was like i'm jumping off this and i won't be messing with it so i took the 200 dollars loss like i said looking to make 1220 i increased this position even uh with the tax i feel great about it 
And then uh, just gonna continue to look at more companies moving forward, because obviously you don't. I don't want to just put everything in a Zim, even though like twenty five thousand dollars. That's not really a huge amount of money, you know. That that's a, that's a pretty good amount to put in there. Obviously, that takes up over half my portfolio, and most people be like, "Yeah, you shouldn't put half your portfolio in one thing." I agree, um, but right now that is one of the better things for me to look at. I also have forty thousand dollars in the uh, 401k and uh you know i have you know my diecast collection which has nothing to do with this stuff but if i ever sold that collection you know, you're looking at me getting 30 35 grand off of that so this technically only counts as like 33 percent uh, like the whole portfolio so really this is only only when it comes to assets and stuff that's only like 10% maybe if that of my like the life assets of things so uh, you know the bigger picture it's way less than what it looks like with the 54 here um what else real quick I took a deeper look into Haynes brands I'm going to look deeper into this and look at the uh, balance sheets and so forth and dividends and see what I think because I do like Hings Brands in their history. And I was saying in previous videos, like I would dump a lot into it. And I don't know, I maybe, I'm still I'm still really not sure. Cause like I, I'm really going for getting a lot of money, bringing in a lot of cash flow, but I want to do it more safely than when I did those um, swing trade positions, which all those three that I sold to build up the Zim, those are all swing trade positions. And we can see where they weren't doing a whole lot. They also didn't have, a, well, I didn't look deep into BBD or ABEV, which ABEV is a beer company out of Brazil, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, some of their balance sheets are all right, you know, but um, I just cannot pass up the opportunity for Zen. But I'm going to be looking a lot more into companies than what I have in the past uh, before I decide to jump in on some of them. Like the, the risk that I'm taking versus the reward, the reward that I can get. I still stand by Zen, but for anyone's coming into the future... And again, BRFS, I do not recommend messing with that for anything at all. You know, I had to learn a hard way, you know, like I said, you know, but fortunately it wasn't a super hard way because I'm only taking a $200 loss instead of, you know, a full $1,400. So, and I might even be able to use that as a tax write-off because I actually took a loss. <laughs> so I don't have to pay capital gains of 15% on that because I actually went red when I sold it. You know, so that's that. But yeah, so... Uh, I'm going to look into some other ones, and as I look further and further into companies, I'm also going to be looking into um, high dividend yield paying companies, but I'm also wanting to make sure that they have really good balance sheets like Zim. If you have not already looked at that balance sheet, I definitely recommend that you should. And you should also check out other good balance sheets like Coca-Cola and good companies like that so you can see how good companies function. So that way when you're researching on companies with high dividend yields or other you know things like that, you know, like, okay, you know, this is a pretty safe bet. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of rambling here, so I'll get out of this video and, you know, and stop rambling. But I'm going to be looking more into Haynes Brands. I've also been looking into AGNC because it pays monthly. That is a REIT. Um, and some people aren't real fond on them. But I'm going to look further into AGNC as well because I like the dividend. And I'm going to look um, more into... Petroleum in Brazil, PBR also, even though it pays that 15% uh, Brazilian tax. Because I want to look into solid companies, but I also want to look into high dividend yield companies. That way I can get that cash flow, and then I can build positions into older companies. Like even, even maybe, uh, I still might build more in at and I really don't know yet. Um, but, you, you know, I'm looking all kinds of different stuff that I could look at. You know, and this one here, Zim, I also believe that Zim is a, it, it could be growth. I do believe there's a lot of growth there. Um, obviously, at and you're not looking at growth versus the dividend, right? So you're just making a, a safer dividend play. But, yep, that's what I'm looking at. If there's any companies that y'all look into, you know, that are high dividend yields, feel free to share them because I'd like to look into them also. That way I can add more to my, you know, my... uh. FOB as I put it or like my canning concept of, of being able to get more Get more shares of companies without me having to do physical labor for it But I'm getting it off these dividends. It's a lot better to make money 
clicking a mouse and doing research than it is to dig holes and get bit by fire ants all day and try not to get bit by a snake, you know, with my job. But anyway, this is what I did. I increased that position. I'm at 1,085 shares. I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to be rid of the BRFS that I got into. I just learned more and more. And I think this is looking good. So real quick, what we stand to make on this now, 1,085 shares. We we'll say times, we're gonna go with the 480 after that 25% tax. We're still looking at $5,208 come next month. Not including the roughly 3,000, maybe 3,500 that I get from my job, so that's pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and also minus. I'm gonna go ahead and say 12% because the tax brackets which I did look this up. Let me go real quick. I believe it's 10, 12, and goes into like 20% and so forth. Let's see. 2023 tax brackets. Real quick, so we can just get this one going. Yeah, okay, 10, 12, 22, so forth, yeah. We just, oh yeah, that's what it's gonna be. And my taxes, most of the time, I'm sitting about 12%. I don't really go much over that. Last year, I went over it barely. But I try to stick around that percentage. And the 401k, since I can send so much more money into that, it helps me out. But let's go ahead and just go with 12%, right? So minus 12%, even off of that. $4,583 after taxes is what I will be getting extra next month. You know, divide that by, we'll say three, because that covers three months, it's quarterly. Still bringing in 1527 after the 25%, after the US taxes, you know, and you know, the bit I get from my job and so forth. I am happy with that. I'm, I'm you know, I'm go with that all day long. Anyway, um, I'll let y'all go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for leaving some comments and stuff. I'm super like glad to be able to talk to y'all about some stuff and get insight, get more information that y'all are sharing with me. I do appreciate it because really it's just myself. And when I get help from y'all as well, it gives me things to look into and be a better investor and so forth. So I do appreciate that. Thank you. If you guys have any other thing that you want to check out or any uh, companies you want to suggest that I, you know, I'll be happy to look into them as well and see what I think and, and go with. But anyway, I hope y'all have a great weekend and see you Monday, if not Monday, Sometime next week so we can see what's going on with the markets. Uh, see you on the next one. Y'all have a good day.